day family thank you for joining once again in on today's lesson what's cooking good looking in today's topic will be changing the subject or the formula also called rearranging the formula and today's lesson is made up of two parts the first part is changing the subject of the formula straight into the lesson so in the first example i want to make t the subject of the formula so in order to make t the subject of the formula you want to isolate it from the rest so a good place to start is to take the u over to the other side so if you take the u over to the other side you'll have v minus u is equals to a t but we haven't isolated t yet so what we can do here is divide both sides by a so that the a's can cancel out on the right hand side so therefore t should be equals to v minus u over a that was really an easy question so in the second example i want to make um, r the subject of the formula so once again we need to isolate r and have the other variables or the other letters on one side and r stand on its own on the other side so what we can do is we can multiply both sides Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to multiply the left and the right hand side by V over T. Multiply both sides, left hand side and right hand side by V over T. So V over T is equals to V over T. And on this side, we have K. And on this side, we have R squared times T over V. So V and V cancel out here, T and T cancel out here. So after cancelling out and the rearranging of terms, you'll see that R squared is equals to V over T times K. And now what we can do is we can take the square root on both sides to cancel the square out. So this and this cancels. So it implies that r should be equals to the square root of v over t times k. So let's have a look at this tier 3 type question, what I consider a bit challenging. And in this example, let's isolate the r. Let's have the r stand alone. It's the whole point of changing the subject of the formula. Subject being having one of the variables or the letters stand by themselves. So in this case, what I would recommend is to always get rid of the search. And the opposite, or the inverse of, uh, not the inverse, but the operator that cancels out the search, in all cases, is usually the square. So remember, whenever you take the square on the left side, you also need to take the square on the right hand side so you take the square here you take the square there so this square and this square root cancel out so therefore t squared is equals to a plus pi r squared and then you need to take the a that side so therefore we will get t squared minus a is equals to pi r squared. Divide both sides by pi. Divide both sides by pi. These two simply cancel out. So it implies that r squared is equals to t squared minus a all over pi. So now you can take the square root on both sides. Remember the square cancels the square root and the square root cancels the square. Right? So you take the square root on both sides. So this cancels that. And don't forget the plus minus here. So therefore r should be equals to plus minus square root of t squared minus a over pi. 